Well, I want to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, leaders who are behind me that I'll be talking more about here momentarily. Uh, uh, leaders from our uh, university sectors, private sectors, public sectors. Uh, it's just a remarkable aggregation of expertise uh, and people who are truly interested, concerned about, involved in advancing the next generation of space exploration as, as well as economizing uh, that next generation of space exploration. Uh, I want to thank uh, Vanessa Weish uh, for uh, her tour today, for the information, for the collaboration uh, that she's providing uh, with the state of Texas, with the private sector, with the, the public sector, every, everything uh, that she and NASA are doing. Now, I want to thank Speaker Phelan for being here, uh, Chair Bonin, and I think it's fair to say, I think you would agree. We probably wouldn't be here today to be announcing what we are today had it not been for both uh, the, the genius, the inspiration, the perspiration that was put into this effort uh, by Dr. Bonin. Uh, are we in your district right now? Close. Cl cl close, to his, close to his district <laughs> right, right now. Uh, but but it, he, he was perhaps the foremost leader in making sure that we got across the finish line uh, the, both the, the, the legislation and the product uh, that we're going to be talking about today. One thing we will be talking about today are the announcement of the, of the members of the Texas Space Commission, uh, and I want to thank them. I'll say a little bit more about that momentarily. I, I want to thank the legislators with us here today, and I want to pass on the regrets by the uh, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, uh, who strongly supports this uh, but could not uh, attend today. I also want to give a shout out uh, to a new friend uh, I have today, someone that I had the opportunity to, to visit with uh, over the phone, uh, and that is uh, an astronaut, uh, Laurel O'Hara, uh, who is uh, circumventing uh, the Earth right now. Uh, and so my, uh, my first phone conversation uh, with an astronaut in outer space, uh, and it was fun and fabulous, and it, it, it shows you uh, how in interconnected uh, we are, those of us here on Earth, with uh, what is going on perpetually uh, in outer space. You know, in this past session, one of the most forward-looking things we did was to create the Texas Space Commission. The Commission's goal is to expand upon Texas's proven leadership in civil, commercial, and military aerospace activity. As many people know, uh, space and space exploration uh, is a rapidly advancing frontier. It's a green field for advanced communications and technology, for artificial intelligence, for robotics, for biotechnology, for supply chain solutions, and so much more real life applications that will touch the lives of, of every American and, and everybody on uh, the entire globe in so many countless ways that. Uh, they may not even grapple with it yet, and that's just what we're doing now. What we seek to be able to do in, in the future will uh, be even more expansive about what it will create here in our capabilities on Earth. Today, however, we are at NASA to announce the members of the Texas Space Commission, the members of the Texas Aerospace Research and Space Economy Consortium, and how we will secure the future of space exploration for the next generation of Texans. Texas has always been the leader in the United States space program from its very inception. Remember back in time, it was at Rice University in Houston, Texas, where John F. Kennedy pronounced that the United States would put a man on the moon. And the first word spoken after brave astronauts completed their landing on the moon was the word Houston. Men, women, and children from across the globe watched as Neil Armstrong became the first human to walk on the moon on a mission that was directed from right here at the Houston facility. Now, with the Texas Space Commission, our great state will have leaders who are laser focused on advancing the next generation of human space exploration 
and connecting that exploration with real life economies here in our country and across our globe. They will encourage the development of emerging technologies, promote economic development for space, aeronautics, and aviation, guide research into space exploration all across our state, help to develop workforce training needed to return to the moon and to eventually reach Mars, and they will cultivate the infrastructure needed to establish space sports and so much more. As we return to the stars with a renewed zeal, NASA is teaming with Texas companies like SpaceX, Firefly, Blue Origin, and so many more to achieve the latest dreams of manned space exploration. Texas will be the launch pad for Mars. And as we look to the future of space, one thing is clear. Those who reach for the stars do so from the lone star state, the great state of Texas. And now I will pass it to the Speaker of the House, Dave Phelan. Uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you all for being here. I don't know what's more exciting about being in Houston today. This backdrop, this setting, are those Houston Cougars. I mean, you tell me, um, with all due respect to the Texas A&M, John Sharp, <laughs> heck of a ball game, but the Houston Cougars looking pretty good in my bracket right now. Um, thank you all for being here. It is a, it, it's, what a backdrop we have today, being here at the Johnson Space Center. This is where I came as a child uh, and bought freeze-dried ice cream and was inspired about the, 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 the wonders of space and, and really at the time did not understand the investment the state of Texas has made in aerospace and how the investment the United States made in aerospace here in Texas. My children come here every seventh grade for a field trip um, and here at the Johnson Space Center and I've been with them each time. It's glad to be back here. I, I will probably hit the gift shop on my way out of here uh, for the same for the same um, uh, freeze dried ice cream, but it's good to be here to celebrate the next step of leadership in the state of Texas in aerospace. That happened this past session. It is such a phenomenal experience um, to, to know that Texas is entering into the next realm of aerospace investments in the state of Texas. NASA's role cannot be understated. We know that it's not just the movies and TV and but it's the economic investment that NASA has made in the state of Texas and that Texas has made in the NASA. 1,800 aerospace companies are based in the state of Texas now. 1,800. 150,000 jobs are directly related to aerospace here in the state of Texas. That's one out of every 10 jobs in the United States in aerospace are right here in the state of Texas. And that's just, um, that's just the direct jobs. Let's talk about the technology that this space has created in Texas. Telecommunications, uh, transportation, healthcare, broadband, you name it, this space has, has created an economic windfall for the state of Texas. And what we did this past session with HB 3447, with Dr. Bonin's leadership, and Dennis Paul, we're in Dennis Paul's district right now. Dennis, thank you. He's always been a, a leader on uh, aerospace as well and, and uh, led that caucus. But Dr. Bonin creating this commission and this consortium, which by the way, was one of the most sought after uh, appointments that I've seen and my staff has seen in decades. Uh, the individuals trying to uh, be appointed to this commission came from all over the state and some of the most highly qualified individuals that I've ever seen. And it was some of the most difficult decisions. I don't want to speak the, for the governor or for the lieutenant governor, for, but for myself, it was very difficult because that's how qualified they are. Economic development, military, um, academic research, military, commercial. Civil aviation, uh, it, it was, they, they came from all sectors, and we have the best and the brightest standing behind us right now, ready to serve the state of Texas. Uh, Texas A&M is going to be a huge, huge partner in this. We know that. 
uh, leveraging our higher education uh, institutions is something we always try to do in the state of Texas. Uh, last week, a week ago today, we had the CHIPS Act in Dallas and leveraging our, our institution of higher education for that as well. So it's, it's just great to double down on the resources we have, uh, specifically for Texas a and I want to um, thank uh, Dr. Bonham and Ms. Huffman for their leadership in the House and the Senate, uh, the entire legislature, the governor and his office. Uh, like he said, this next generation of Texans will be act, act, actually figuratively and in reality <laughs> reaching for the stars. And you're sitting right here in a room right now that demonstrates that. So with that, I thank you all for being here, and I uh, turn it over to Dr. Bonham. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, Texas has been the hub of human space exploration since its inception. And uh, we are entering into a time where space exploration is really entering a golden age. Uh, it, the cost of getting into orbit uh, is falling precipitously, and things that uh, I think our parents could have only dreamed about are starting to become a reality, and it's happening at an accelerated rate. It's happening really, really quickly. And so uh, the focus that we have today is to ensure that we maintain uh, that position of leadership. And it's really important that those that are leaders in a given field are performing to the best of their ability. And that's what we're committing ourselves to doing as a state. And we're doing that not just for the, the benefit of Texans, but for the benefit of Americans and for all people uh, in the world. Everyone benefits from what is learned and gained uh, in the exploration and the development of space and in the, the space economy. Um, as the speaker mentioned, when uh, you look at the experience, the caliber, the accomplishment of the people who are serving on this commission and consortium, uh, I would submit to you there is not uh, a comparable group on planet Earth. This is the most talented and uh, you know, most experienced group that you're gonna find when it comes to space. And I'm really, really excited uh, for the work that they're going to do. I'm also really appreciative of the fact uh, that people who could be spending their time uh, at any given moment doing really highly productive things have seen the value to invest themselves into this effort. Uh, and so I, I want to thank them now for the good work that they're going to do and, and let them know that we're committed uh, to supporting them and to taking action on the strategic plan and on the initiatives that they uh, deemed to be the biggest return on investment for Texans. And I, I'm just going to close by telling you that also like the speaker, and, that, and I see William Harris of Space Center Houston here, I have fond memories as a child <laughs> of my parents putting myself and my three siblings in the, the station wagon, and we would pull right up here onto the campus. There, it wasn't really a secure area at that <laughs> time, and get out and, and walk around. And to be here today is just really, uh, it's really an amazing thing. I could never have dreamed uh, at that time of being in this situation. And so when you see uh, little kids running around the Space Center, just keep in mind, those little kids are the future. And someday some of them are gonna be sitting at a, a table like this, uh, talking about things that we can only dream about uh, today. Uh, some of them will end up being astronauts. Some of them will be uh, leaders, scientists, engineers. Uh, it really is a great day. It's a great day for uh, what we're going to do, and it's a great day uh, to inspire the next generation of leaders. Thank you. And, and now, uh, Vanessa Weiss. Good morning. Uh, I'm Vanessa Weiss, director of NASA's Johnson Space Center, and I want to uh, welcome you all here today. I especially want to welcome Governor Abbott, Speaker Phelan, and Representative Bonin for being here at Johnson Space Center, and most importantly, for your, your, your investment in the state of Texas and in aerospace and space exploration. Uh, we're so excited for what the Texas Space Commission will bring to the state of Texas and our flourishing aerospace industry. At NASA's Johnson Space Center, as you said, uh, we have been uh, the foundation for more than 60 years of human space exploration. Here we have a vision to dare to expand frontiers, unite with our partners to explore for the benefit of all humanity. Here at Johnson Space Center, we are the hub of human exploration. We have mission control, astronaut training, human health and performance in space medicine, and management of NASA's premier human space flight missions. It is a very exciting time in human space exploration. 
In fact, the past two years have been our busiest in decades, and we have much to look forward to. In the coming years, NASA and its academic, commercial, and international partners will see the completion of the phenomenally successful International Space Station. However, we will continue to have presence in low Earth orbit by new space stations that will be built by commercial companies. We also have commercial endeavors that are going to be going on that will help us to develop new spacesuits, human landers, and many other systems that will enable us to have private sector be investors to accelerate human space exploration. All of this enables the Artemis program where we will witness our nation's return to the lunar surface and this time establishing a sustainable human presence on the moon in preparations for human missions to Mars. We appreciate the state of Texas interest in STEM with programs like the Texas High School Aerospace Scholars Program. It is important to note that that program started under the direction of former Johnson Space Center Director George Abbey, an aerospace legend who passed away on Sunday, March 24th. Through that program for 25 years, NASA has worked proudly with the state and academic institutions to develop technology outreach programs to inspire and train the next generation of scientists, technologists, engineers, and mathematicians, impacting more than 12,000 Texas students across 350 cities in the state. And we're looking forward to our continued partnership with universities in the state of Texas and others as we expand now to include Texas A&M's T-SPACE, which stands for Space Aeronautics and Curation Exploratorium, which is a multi-user facility that will be built on land made available at Johnson Space Center. This facility will foster the growth of a STEM workforce pipeline by creating learning opportunities for youth, college graduates, younger workers interested in aerospace, and more established Texas workers transitioning to this very, very building space economy. With continued investment in the region, the Texas economy will benefit significantly from the ancillary job creation and growth resulting from new aerospace companies in the state. The future of Texas' legacy in aerospace is bright as we take more giant leaps in space exploration together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, listen, this is an extraordinary day, a, a day of the uh, next level of what will be done in the advancement of space exploration. Uh, but I think one thing that we can all agree upon, uh, and that is with, with every new advancement that is taking place, uh, we are building upon the legacy of what has been achieved right here at NASA, a legacy that's been uh, lasting for, I guess, about 60 years. I was going to say more, more than a half a century, <laughs> uh, for, for 60 years. Uh, and uh, it, it's, uh, I, I know gathered in this room here today uh, are many of the hardworking members of NASA uh, at, at different positions. And I know, I know this that the astronauts, uh, who are the stars, uh, they get the attention. Uh, but the astronauts know uh, what I know and, and many others know, uh, and that is this is an extraordinary team effort. Uh, and I want to express my gratitude as governor of the state of Texas for uh, everybody uh, associated with the NASA program, for the hard work that you put in every day, for the exceptionalism uh, that you achieve. I also want to pub publicly uh, say something uh, that is a, it's a challenge. I'm, I'm going to lay down a challenge today. Texas is the leader in space exploration. We are the economic hub across the world uh, for this issue. We need to be in the forefront for the future to make sure that we are graduating the students from our universities that are uh, equipped to maintain that leadership. It's time that our premier universities that are so closely connected to this incredible program here, as well as uh, the other private companies around the state of Texas, uh, that they have a launch pad moment themselves to advance education. 
We have the Chancellor from Texas A&M here today. Uh, my challenge to him, uh, which will be made to other universities in the state of Texas also, let's have a space race unto itself in the education sector uh, with our universities competing to be who will be first uh, to have a degree program, undergraduate and maybe post undergraduate in space engineering. Will it be Texas A&M? Will it be the University of Texas? Will it be the University of Houston? I have no idea, but as of right now, the race has begun to see which university in the state of Texas will be the first to offer a degree program in space engineering. We have a space bracket. <laughs> Let's do it. Thank you all very much to NASA, and thank you to everybody involved in the entire space program across the great state of Texas.